Government mass surveillance of the population has pretty much become the norm in countries that have the technology and the infrastructure to actually pull it off. This is something that was suspected by a lot of so-called conspiracy theorists for a long time, but the conspiracy has now been confirmed by the Snowden leaks and the extent to which this mass surveillance is carried out has been revealed. These days, the government doesn't even try to hide the fact that they're spying on us. Instead, they use the ancient strategy of divide and conquer to justify the spying, the same strat that Julius Caesar used to conquer Gaul. Government has managed to convince large portions of the citizen populace that certain aspects of this mass surveillance is good for them and keeps them safe. In fact, they'll tell you that you could be even safer if you tell your local representative to support the countless new bills and executive actions without legislation that further expand the surveillance state. For example, in New York City, the police there have decided to use aerial drones to monitor people that are having backyard barbecues. All it really takes for one of these little unmanned drones to be hovering over your overpriced New York lawn is someone calling in to report to the cops that you are having a large gathering in your backyard. Wait, are large gatherings illegal now? Is it suspicious to have a large gathering on your own private property during a national holiday? You see, this is where most of the legislative effort goes in this country these days. It goes into finding the perfect ways to circumvent your right to privacy. The Fourth Amendment is supposed to protect you from the police searching and spying on your property without a warrant or without probable cause. But of course, those high mortgage payments that you're making don't include ownership over your airspace. Anything taller than maybe a basketball goal is officially police airspace that's used for drones and other surveillance equipment to come in and surveil you or maybe to park itself and perch so that they can recharge the ADX optical zoom 4K night vision camera that the city bought and installed onto the drone with your taxpayer money so that they can keep you safe. And of course, Mayor Eric Adams, who was a police captain himself, fully supports the NYPD's use of drones. And he actually wants to expand New York's drone usage even further, saying that he wants to use Israel's use of drone technology in their country as a blueprint for what he wants to do in New York. But of course, if you want to get a gun in order to protect you and your family so that you guys can have some actual safety, you're going to have to bend over backwards and do some backflips through hoops for the city in order for you to get a concealed carry permit to use in the state of New York. That's an easy litmus test that you can use on these city officials or whoever your government is to see if they actually care about your safety and your liberty, if they want to make it easier for criminals to arm themselves than for responsible taxpaying citizens, then it's guaranteed that you're going to get a rise in violent crime so severe that the mayor can say that he wants to use IDF counterterrorist surveillance techniques in your backyard so that they can keep you safer and nobody is going to bat an eye at the proposal. Yes, fear is the tool that the government uses to make you welcome these illusions of safety that they put in place. Every day, people stand in lines for the TSA, they drive through police checkpoints, and now they're going to grill hot dogs in their backyards with police surveillance drones hovering overhead so that they can have another illusion of safety. Some people think it's perfectly okay for the police to break the law. They'll say that these overreaches are for the greater good. Like when the police, or when the FBI rather, carried out Operation Pacifier. 
This was a mission where law enforcement had taken over a hidden service, you know, a Tor hidden service that was distributing child abuse material. They took over this after they got an anonymous tip, probably from one of that hidden services competitors. And instead of them just shutting down the site and arresting the owner, they decided to keep running the website themselves for a few weeks in order to add some de-anonymizing malware to the site in order to catch some of the site's users. And during the time that police were in control of the playpen, the site's users were saying that the website had actually gotten better and that pages were loading faster and the site seemed to have better performance. And this was probably because the FBI were using their servers in their state-of-the-art data center to host the site instead of leaving it up on whatever shady low-tier hosting service the site's original creator was using. So the police were actually distributing videos and pictures of children being abused in order to protect the children. I mean, what's next? The police setting up crack houses in order to catch crackheads? The police becoming pimps in order to catch Johns? Now, we all know protecting the children is one of the most potent divide and conquer tactics. But before you vote yes on another bill that claims to improve your safety or your kids' safety, understand this. When you give the police the legal authority to commit any crime they want, Criminals, and of course, corrupt police officers, are going to find a way to exploit that. The same is true for the online accounts that the police use when committing cybercrimes in order to try and fight other cybercrimes, like we see here with this Operation Pacifier example. And this is something that's made worse by corporations. You see, we live in a world where it's not just the government watching you, but it's also big tech companies like Amazon, Google, and Facebook that create these free but not libre softwares for you to use. These programs are free because you are the product. Everything that you do on Facebook is stored by Facebook. Everything that you search for on Google or that you watch on YouTube is stored by Google and used by them for targeted advertising. Everything that you look at on Amazon, and especially that you buy on Amazon, is stored and monetized by Amazon and used in their ad network. Now, normally, this network and this data is used by these companies for their own profits, but they also have partnerships with law enforcement where they share these data points on you with them whenever they request it to fight crime. And at a high level, this relationship between big tech and the government probably really exists so that these companies don't have any antitrust action brought against them. Because we keep hearing politicians saying how much power these companies have. And I mean, if you look at it, really, when it comes to governing the Internet, Amazon and Google seem to be much more powerful than the government, especially than the U.S. government. And so some politicians will beat the drum saying that these companies need to be further regulated, but yet no action actually ends up taking place. But anyway, if a hacker can spoof an email from a federal agent to these companies, or if they can actually steal the credentials to that federal agent's email, then they can just as easily get that data from the big tech companies sent to them as if they were an actual law enforcement officer. If a hacker can compromise an account that's used for something like Operation Pacifier, then they basically have a license to distribute CSAM or whatever new horrible crime the police are going to get a pass to commit in the future. Police may be a necessary evil in our society, but they are not your friends. Don't put them above the law, and whatever you do, do not give up your rights to them.